Hello everyone, this is Fawn coming to you from Napa Acupuncture Practice. And this video is for people who have been to my clinic and I have recommended them Moxa. So I wanted to give a demonstration. So make sure you talk with your acupuncturist before starting moxibustion because it's important that you know which places to use it on your body and make sure that it's safe for you and your specific condition. You never touch the moxa stick to your skin. Don't use moxibustion if you have cancer because it increases white blood cells. And also be careful if you're using moxibustion when you're pregnant because it can be used to help support labor and you don't wanna do that unless you have your doctor's approval. Um, the other thing is if you have neuropathy or you have a loss of sensation in your limbs, it's very important not to use moxibustion because you can very easily burn yourself. So this is the warning to consult your local acupuncturist and make sure you have their blessing before you do moxibustion or see them for moxibustion in person. So today I'm going to be demonstrating stick moxa. This is what a stick moxa looks like and you are going to use do 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 a lighter. I use the giant kitchen lighter because I'm not very good with a cigarette lighter. And then you're going to need a jar that has a lid on it. I like to use the good old canning jars, but any jar you can use a recycled jar um, is good. So I um, pre-started a moxa stick because it takes so long to be able to do the moxa stick. So here is the one. I have a little jar too to help make it easier. And you can see this stick needs a little bit of warming up. But see how there has the gray to it? That's how you know that the moxa stick is lit. So you have to use more than a match. You can use a candle, you can use a lighter, you can use your gas stove, any of those things. And when it is glowing or white on the end of the tip like this, you know that it is ready to go. So you can feel the glow. So you never touch the stick to the skin. Today we're gonna to be doing um, some moxa for what's called Dupretin's contractures. It is a way of um, helping to relax the tendons in the hands. And I'll also be showing the point, so stomach 36, which is a point for longevity of life, immunity, digestion. It's just an amazing point. So here we go. We got the moxa stick, it's warm. And then we're gonna have, this as our model. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hello. Thank you for joining <laughs> us. So um, I am going to do it here along her tendons to help soften them up. So we just gently go around here and you stop using the moxa when you feel uh, that it's warm. So you, you wanna do it until it stops feeling good. So you keep just gently going around on the palm and you also wanna keep your fingers locally nearby to make sure that it's not getting too hot. So this is just a generalized moxibustion along the tendons versus doing it on a specific point. So it should feel good it is a way of helping with energy and it's also kind of an infrared heat. If at any point in time it looks like you have too much ash on your moxa stick, you can use the side of your jar like that to dip the ash off to wipe it off so you make sure not to get it on the person. Okay, so that's the demonstration for the hand. Now we're gonna do the point stomach 36, which is the one that everybody <laughs> loves to have done. So you're gonna have your hand right underneath the kneecap and along the side of the bone. That's the point that you're looking for. And just same thing, you're just gonna go in a little circle like this or you can keep it in the one place and you're gonna hold your hand nearby to make sure that you're not getting the local area too hot. How's that feeling? It feels so nice and oh, warm. Oh, good, good. This is good for helping, um, again, with immunity. It's like getting the point needle, but even better because it br brings the warmth an infrared light would do something similar, but there you go. And then I would do it on the other side too, like here. And just do it until the area feels warm and good. And then you know that you are doing it right. And the other time I recommend moxibustion to patients, and this is specifically for my patients, is if they're wanting to turn a breech baby. So the very specific point is on the corner of the pinky nail right there of the foot. So same thing here. I'm just going to go around on the pinky toe until it's uncomfortable. So it needs to be a strong sensation. And when you have that strong sensation, um, it is 
calling out to the baby, telling the baby that it's time to turn around. The other last point I want to talk about is also for pregnant women to help promote um, ripening so that they are ready to give birth. And that point is large intestine four right here. It's half the distance of this bone in the center. This is also the command of the face. So it's good for allergies, toothache, eye stuff, nose stuff, any of that kind of stuff. And then again, see, I'm just checking to make sure it's not getting too hot. This is a supposedly smokeless kind of moxa, but it definitely still has a smell. The traditional moxa bustion sticks have a lot more smell, so I recommend that you do them outside. Um, it's a really good way of being able to support your immune system at home, a way to fill in between treatments. Um, it's good for increasing circulation in the body, promoting the lymphatic system. People use it to get less frequent headaches or less intense migraines. It helps with arthritis, especially pain that's worse with cold, damp weather because this is warming and helping to promote the circulation. It's good, like we talked about, for helping to ripen labor, and it's good for turning a fetus around. Like I said, the point stomach 36 is awesome for energy and immunity, helps you just to stay well. It's good for promoting digestion, stomach 36 as well. Um, it also has properties to stop bleeding, um, antibiotic properties. It can be used as, as an expectorant for mucus, and it's an anti-asthmatic as well. So lots of amazing benefits. So then when you're done with your moxa stick, you can either put it in a jar of sand or dirt or something like that. You want to make sure not to get the stick wet because when you get it wet, you can't use it again. So the jar that we had before, you put your moxa stick in it. You close it up, and then you can put it outside your house or wherever, and the jar will help to put the moxa out because it will be deprived of oxygen. So um, the first time you do this, just monitor to make sure that it does go out on its own and um, see how it's smoking like that. When it stops smoking, you know that it's out. So if you have any questions, again, feel free to leave us a message, and I look forward to seeing you in our clinic. Thanks so much.